both sectors in Norway, regardless where they are located. And then we have sub-targets. More uh, startups, these are growth industries, and these are clusters. So we are divided into three main categories, so three main strategies, if you like. Today we will be talking about this, but uh, as you know, we have in, in our region, we have a lot of uh, growth companies, and also we have clusters. Uh, NCE cluster for uh, Redfoss, uh, I for Plastics is a new cluster that has sort of emerged, and Total Group, and this is three main clusters in, in this area. So what do we mean by uh, good startups? Uh, we're looking for people who have uh, an interest and have uh, zest or, or uh, really a fire within themselves to do something about their future, about their idea, and really uh, are on fire to do things differently and to 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 really take the take on the the challenge of starting up a company do something with their idea uh, not only start for themselves you know it's a lot of people just starting up a one man company or or two two people but what we're looking for is people who have will have 20 people in five years and 200 people in two in 10 years. You know, that sort of attitude. Not all have that attitude, but we're looking for them. As you, I'm sure you've heard, uh, starting up a company is a high risk business, high risk uh, type of uh, venture. Um, most startups fail, unfortunately. But we try to use our instruments so that as few as possible fail, and that so as many as possible succeed. That's why we we share risk with the uh, startup company. We share risk in finance. We share risk in education, and we share risk also in operation. So. Our mission here is to, to help the startup company to reduce risk. What, what question? Do sure. you mean that one or two uh, startups <clears throat> yeah. are slow at five years slow of an operation? Is that a national number, international number, or regional number? National. national. Yeah. And I think it might be a little bit exaggerated. I think actually the failure rate is higher than two out of three. Yeah, or, or even 5% success. Right. So and I guess it also depends on industry or yeah. sector. Yeah, absolutely. So I just translate the, the slide there. Startups are not small versions of established industries. And this is very important. The, a startup is something, or an organization, or an organism maybe, that sort of lives in all, its own life, and has its own sort of life cycle. Uh, at least those startups uh, that succeed. We are looking for, also for people that are willing to uh, look into the business model of, of the idea. That, that is very important. I'll get a little bit more back to the business model uh, canvas, but, but it's very important to find out how should I attack a market? How does the market look? Who are the players within the market? And also, what can I do with my resources to succeed in that market? We are very good in technology. I mean, you people are technologists. Uh, and that's fine. Definitely, that's it's excellent. 
but you also need to know more about the market that you're going entering into. And that's probably also where we come in. Market is important is very important in uh, succeeding. Some someone said, you know, if you build a better mousetrap, the uh, world would come running to your door, and that doesn't happen. Quite frankly, it doesn't happen. You have to go out and to find those doors that are interested in the better mousetrap. As uh, Steve Lank is saying, get the hell out of the building. It's not happening inside the building, it's happening outside the building, in the marketplace. And this is probably the most central message I can give to you the whole day. Uh, use your knowledge, use your fire to find out more about the market. So, what can we do? How can you do it? We have, I'll just go through these the bullet points. Uh, we have courses here. Each county organizes uh, startup courses. And, and why, we do, why do we do that? Same thing, we want you to succeed. We want you to get around the obstacles to get through the pitfalls and that uh, you will have a better chance of success. So that's why we have, uh, have uh, training sessions, if you like, or, or courses, uh, once or twice per year in each city and region in Upland uh, County. So uh, just follow uh, on our website if you're interested. There's a lot of information there. The, the, um, I, the whole idea is that we go through uh, I'll, I'll show you actually what we need, what we will do. There is uh, five modules, at least five modules. This is also a little bit dynamic, but market you know know your customers and their needs. How to build a sustainable business? How's the uh, external environment and and risk assessment? This is business modeling. Uh, pitch. Pitch training, you got two minutes. Basically, you got two minutes to promote an idea when you are in front of a customer. After two minutes, if you haven't sold and gotten his or her attention, forget it. You can we might as well leave. Two minutes is the crucial time in a business life when you are facing your customer. Tax and, and uh, value added. And then also in each commune, there is a nadding, so a business sort of uh, helper, if you like. I know that's a very bad translation, but, but it, it is a, 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 an organization with each commune that also might be of assistance to you. Yep. Two questions. Uh, one, is this in just in Norwegian, or uh, do you offer these courses in uh, in English? As no, well? they are in, in Norwegian. Mm -hmm. But we can tailor made. Well, well, let's let's see if we can tailor made. Uh, let's say a group like this could be very interesting for us to to try to to make an English uh, version of it. Because you're innovative. You you know work yeah, well, for you know, <laughs> times, right? Uh, Live as you learn. Yeah, and and then the second um, second question is, where exactly do they have to go if they want to? We can arrange it here. Yeah. We we don't have any certain places, but okay. we usually we usually do it in connection with the uh, Nightings Road. Mm -hmm. So they they have low, you know sort of places that we can go. But uh, uh, this would be excellent, yeah. like the room like this. Yes. Sir. Another question, it might be coming back to that for the uh, KGR. Uh, so you've been running this for a few months, so which means that you're going to see a pattern in what are the strengths and weaknesses. And, and which of these modules, or where do you see the most having a trouble and, and they really need the, the module? Here. Definitely. This is selling. Yeah. Definitely. This is 
for a lot of people or for a lot of startups, this is so new and so outside the box mm -hmm. that uh, it, it takes some effort to, to get into this system. So, we have money. Money is our business. And uh, how do we spend it? Well, we would like to spend it on you, given the fact that the, the uh, ideas and the, the, the business plans and and uh, all the, uh, let's say, the surrounding environment is, is uh, favorable. There is a possibility. We have what we call etablerer tilskudd, so startup grant. And this is split in two phases. First phase is is my business viable? Is my business idea viable? Second phase is more product development uh, and, and things like that. I'll get back to it. But there's a problem and a solution. And there is a solution based on, on, on building onto a business model. So these are the two phases that we are involved in with the startup grant. This is you now we're starting to get uh, closer to the market to the marketplace so i'll talk about those two <clears throat> so it's market uh, market survey market uh, sort of finding out uh, questions with regards to the market and this is more commercialization which means, of course, that then you have a you you progressed on the product development, and you might have a prototype, uh, things like that. So phase one. <clears throat> Again, talk to the customer. Get out of the building. So these are development tied up to customer needs. Is the idea viable, as I said? And how, how would a um, product or a, a service, it doesn't have to be nuts and bolts, to be a service, to be a program, to be anything. Uh, but we're not giving startup grants to consultants and hairdressers and plumbers and electricians. It has to be a more industrial or academic type of uh, business idea, if you like. <laughs> but these are the requirements, criteria, vexed uh, growth ambitions. Is there a possibility in the new value of the idea or the solution? Uh, are the applicant able to describe the marketplace segments, uh, customer needs, and these things? So already here, we're starting to talk about market and the marketplace. So these are some of the activities that uh, would be uh, included in a phase one. Market survey, market research. You can uh, start develop prototypes. Yeah, you can really test and and uh, development, and also networking and uh, what is the comp competence if you need to get more, uh, more uh, let's say technical or market knowledge. Some of this money can be used for that. <clears throat> the uh, what we will sort of what's underlying all our activities is the fact that we have to uh, tailor our grants and also our financial instruments according to the uh, EU regulations and laws. And they are very strict on what type of activities is included and what, who are, which one are not, and these things. So all these activities, as is listed here, is approved and according to EU regulations. So it doesn't really matter if you do this in Sweden or in Portugal or in Norway, it's the same rules that applies to all over the place. So that's phase two. 
Then you're a little bit, let's say, further up the road. You have uh, confirmation from the marketplace that, okay, something uh, good going on here. It might be a market for this product. <clears throat> so then a more, let's say, development type of phase uh, occurs. And the money that uh, we grant can be used for, uh, let's say, uh, the development work. So, as I said, what, what sort of activities could be connected to the phase two? Product and, uh, and service development, IPR, very important. IPR is central. Uh, networking, and then uh, you can also start thinking about uh, strategy. Strategy, business plan, white visual identity, pages, profiling and stuff. So you're getting into a phase which is closer to the marketplace and to market activities. How do you apply? Very easy. InnovationNorway.no startup or grind and then you just click yourself through the the process and uh, there is an electronic app application form which you fill out and send in we would like to assist you in that process which i think we will do afterwards simon we can do that if some of you have an idea we can discuss how we do it uh and then we decide which sort of phase is most, to, let's say, which is the correct phase for the project that you all are in. And there's a uh, quite a, a big difference in the grant, the, the amount of, of money that you can get in those, those two phases. On phase one, there is a maximum limit of 150,000 Norwegian. In phase two, there is 800,000. Norwegian, and I said this is maximum. I haven't been involved in the project that we give out the maximum amount so far, but uh, but it's in that sort of ballpark. So it's you, it's usually <laughs> we have to look into all all sorts of elements and and considerations when we say these applications. But there's money there. New companies, not older than three years. The value-added activities has to be here in Norway. Uh, we cannot give you a grant for an excellent idea, and you take it to somewhere else and, and uh, do all the work there. Uh, the, uh, the completion of the project, you have to set up uh, you know, milestone plan and which activities will be included in, in each milestone and then how also when you think you will be finished. Nobody will shoot you if that time frame overshoots. That's not how we operate. But it is a good tool in disciplining ourselves mm -hmm. in having a milestone plan. Uh, and also another very important uh, thing, uh, you cannot apply for costs, costs that ha have incurred prior to the application. So if you've done a lot of work before you apply, then those, those costs, that's sunk cost. So that's on you. <clears throat> the date when you Put in push. the application online push. or push. when the decision comes? No, the... no, when you push the button. Okay, from when you submit the application. Yes, when you submit the application, that's correct. All right. <clears throat> so this is the, how we, how we uh, sort of calculate the, uh, the uh, grants. If you are a limited company, there's one per mil of, of uh, the salary. Because if you have 
if you are employed by your own company or, or an, a limited company, there is always a salary. Uh, you might not withdraw the salary from the company, but it is booked in the company's uh, records. If you don't take it out as cash, you will have to, uh, it will be considered as a loan to the company. And for us, it's okay, but it's 600 only per hour, maximum 1,800 hours per, per year. Or you, we also have a, what is it called in English? It's not a limited company. It is the Enkit Monsvoetak. Help me out. Yeah. Um, well, it's 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 a, a sort of loser organized type of, of company. Um, partnership? Yeah. No, no, it's not like a partnership. A one -man what, yeah, it's a one man or sole one trade. person. A sole trader. Sole trader. Yeah. A sole trader won't be the phrase we use in English. If we're a one man company. Sole trader. Sole yeah. trader. Okay. Is the, is the phrase that you use. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's usually uh, it's a lot of, of doctors and, and lawyers and things. They have this type of, uh, of uh, organization. But it's also 600 kroner per hour. This is important. Wesentlich nicht, also something considerably, considerably new. Uh, a new idea, a new product, a new process with a market potential. You have to describe the market potential when you put in an application. Could you just uh, just give some examples of what, what would, how do you uh, sort of prove or make or, or demonstrate a market potential? What would be a typical, what would be a, a great way of showing that? What would be a less great way of, of, of showing innovation or way that establishing that there is a market potential? A kind of very process. simple example, uh, a market, uh, market research survey that let's say you are manufacturing a new type of window or door. And you know that there are 500,000 houses in Norway, each having five uh, windows and two doors, then it's, uh, that, that would constitute the potential market for this new door or window. You, you have to use existing statistical knowledge. So here's the market research coming in. Mm -hmm. And then extrapolate. We, we know that you will not hit 100% market share the first two years. <laughs> Everybody knows that. But what you say is that within five years, we will have 6% market share based on these activities that we plan to do. So my, my problem is just that it, it isn't super complicated. No. Right? You don't have to pay hundreds of thousands no. for somebody else to go around. You, you look at what numbers are there, and you come, you look at existing data, and you extrapolate from that. Yes, exactly. Thank you. That's good. So, but it, for us, it shows that you have been thinking through the process that will lead up to either a success or a failure. And the chance of success is considerably higher if you do these type of exercises than if you don't. That's what we're looking at. Also, you have to show that you want to grow. As I, as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of people who are happy starting by themselves. And I'm not so sure if you're basically looking for those. We want to get in touch with those people who will, in 10 years, we will have 50 people here. So and so many PhDs, masters, and, and what have you. That's what we're looking for. The, uh, I heard uh, someone saying, we're looking for those people who are gold diggers, who really go out and find the new gold. We're not interested in those people making buckets and shovels for those gold diggers. I think that's a fairly good analogy. But remember, those people who are out there finding gold, they need shovels and, and buckets as well. So if you find a better shovel or a better bucket, maybe that's a market.
<coughs> we get a lot of uh, applicants, a lot of them. And some are good and some are not good. And uh, it's when you when you when you submit an application, it, it's it's like uh, you submit an application for a job. This is basically it. This is your future job. This is your future. What we're talking about here. So uh, spend some time. Don't overdo it. Uh, Fifty pages is uh, absolutely overdoing it. Much better to have two pages with all the relevant information than 50 pages with, with uh, well, you do the math. Uh, and think of, why should I give you money? I'm representing, in this sort of context, I'm representing all the taxpayers in Norway. It's also a responsibility. I have to use those funds sensibly. Because when I meet someone out in the street here and they say, you're doing a lousy job, I pay too much tax for you. That's not fun. <laughs> and it's, it's uh, we try to, and we our, our, our mission and our mandate, if you like, is to, to give grants to, to as much good startups as possible. And that's also why we are so adamant on some of these rules. So we mentioned business. Uh, I, I thought I should include this in, in the, the presentation. Market and business modeling. This is a system that a uh, MIT professor, uh, MIT or Harvard, but I think it was MIT. Uh, worked out some years ago, not many years ago, six, seven years ago. It's called the business model canvas. And it, it includes everything that you need to think of when you're starting up a business. If you are running a business, an established business, these points here, if you can fill out sort of the, the, uh, the triggers for, for all these elements, you are on a good way to make a good business plan. As a matter of fact, Osterwalder, Alexander Osterwalder, who made this, he says, business plan doesn't survive one day in real life. So, so this is an alternative to a business plan. Uh, and it, you can sort of divide it in two. Uh, this is where the income comes from, and this is the cost structure, where the, the costs are. I'll give you an example. For example, customer segment. What's the market potential in this segment? You know, do you know your customers? Do you know their needs? All these things. Value proposition. Is it? What, what is it actually that we're doing? What, what is it actually that we are supplying to the marketplace? What value does that has, have for my customer? You know, it's all very logical, uh, uh, but it's logical put in a system that, that actually works. When do you reach your customers? How do you do it? How do you build your relationship with the customer? All these things. All these things that sort of constitute the uh, the uh, the future life of the company. <coughs> yeah. Uh, we also have a mentor service. There is a number of consultants throughout the country who we, which we can. Uh, engage in uh, assisting startup companies. That means that you get your own mentor in either to develop uh, this, the, the, mark, the Alexander Ostwaller canvas, or you have a certain uh, area which you 
need to, to find out. It's a fairly popular service. Yes. Because uh, the mentoring service, do you have to have received a grant from Innovation Norway to be part of that? Yes, yes. This is phase two type of, uh, yes. of uh, area. Because that was what I was thinking is a lot of, I mean, uh, I've heard a lot of people say that, well, with the size of business we're thinking and the kind of services that the money from Innovation Norway isn't you know, worth the hassle. Because mm -hmm. it isn't you know, that much money and we're already out there looking for millions. So these thousands aren't that important. But the thing is, I think a lot of people forget that you have a lot of services that, that are dependent on that grant. Mm -hmm. So maybe the 50,000 isn't that important. But being part of this network, being part of, I mean, that international network is, is super important. Yeah, yeah. And we see that quite often and more and more. But it's not only, uh, uh, as you say, a relatively small amount, at least for phase one uh, of, of money that's important. But it's also the fact that you're connected to an environment that do the same things. They have the same problems. They have the same experiences. And you learn from this. And, and these mentors, these are experienced people who have been out uh, in the war uh, a couple of years, you know. So, so most of them are, are quite good. <coughs> the, um, that's where you can find more information. So I should uh, sort of try to describe what's uh, the development and innovation process. Uh, this Larsen, of course, this is considered the, the greatest invention of all times. I'm not debating that, but you can see he's, uh, he's doing something about the potential there. Before I uh, finalize, on, uh, let's say, yeah, two weeks from now, in uh, K102, we will have a meeting, a dialogue meeting, with people from uh, HIG, with people from the industry all around uh, this area, with people from government. And, uh, well, you can see these people here. This is uh, Norsis, uh, Roger Jonsson from Norsis. So I know Jonsson from Sintef. Uh, she is, uh, oh, I forgot the name, Marie Rusten. She is working with the uh, local council. Uh, and uh, this is Christian uh, Eng. He is the new managing director of Innovation Norway in Oppa. A dialogue conference. If you like to get your voices heard, please come to this event. Because what we will do is that we invite them for hope and hope, hopefully a lot of people with strong opinions and, and voice. And we will record everything that comes out of this meeting. Each county will have the same type of meeting, one or two or three maybe. And, and all that information will be gathered and be presented to the prime minister and to the secretary of industry and trade or you know, Nightings Minister, in uh, June this year. And uh, then hopefully it will become some sort of policy in the future. The important thing is that if you have an idea of what innovation Norway should do, what we should not do, how we should do it, that's the event that you uh, have a chance to, to get your voice heard. and do some change. No, Simon. Uh, I have a very sh short film. It's about an annual event which we organize in Lillehammer. It's called Emax. It's for people like you. People who are thinking about starting up a company, maybe they even have started up a company. Uh, 18 to 23 years old, that's sort of the, the, the target, but uh, it is an event where you really can 
hone your business idea, to, to sharpen your skills, and to, to get some feedback from people in the same sort of, of situation. And it's a lot of fun. It's social, partying at night, uh, at least the last night. <laughs> I guess we'll give up if we get it. We'll have a presentation of that. Emacs. Emacs no dia também dá uma experiência para o meu entrepreneur. E eu vou fazer um novo avião para o meu escola e o meu amor. Já dá uma visão de estou a um título de inspiração. Ny kunnskap og erfaringer rundt det til god bedrift og entreprenørskap. På EMAX møter du mange mennesker. Andre vil ikke interesser som deg, drømmer og vold, venner for livet. I løpet av dagene konkurrerer du i en av de fremste bedriftsimuleringene som finnes. Og det beste laget vinner en meget spennende pris. Frem til nå har førstepremien vært en studiereise med uforglømmelige opplevelser og besøke attraktive entreprenørskapsbyer. EMOX er et fullpakket arrangement med konkurranser, forelesninger med kjente entreprenører og der nettverk står i sentrum. Men arrangementet er også fullt med aktiviteter, Festlig middager og en gang av avslutning. Vi har begrenset på plasser på EMOX, og vi søker etter de mest driftige unge entreprenørene fra hele landet. Du skal være mellom 18 og 25 år, og se deg selv som en fremtidig entreprenør eller leder. Du kan forvente deg en av dine største opplevelser dersom du blir utvalgt. Ta sjansen og søk du også. Dette er EMOX. It's usually a, in August, so uh, please uh, think about it. Check it out on the net. So that was uh, what I would like to tell you. Now you tell me. Starting up. Currently, have any questions, or yes, uh, shall we? I mean, because it, yeah, we can we have a break before your presentations rather than driving straight in. Um, but do you have any questions for Trump? Yeah, about this um, meeting. Um, the UX? No, the previous one. Oh, this one, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm kind of uh, a tutor. I have previously well, reached uh, Anita Krum. Mm -hmm. uh, I tweeted her, and she told me she referred to me about. Uh, well, she told me to talk to Ketil, Ketil Lumba. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I just left that conversation there because we knew that we were coming now to pitch uh, our ideas to, to you. Okay. But I'm really interested in meeting more people from the Russian area and, and, and kind of saying what are my perspectives of what a, a, a Norwegian ecosystem would be because uh, Kind of, I, I, I have been in, in the United States, I have been working there, and there are a lot of, of um, yeah, competitive uh, environments that promote startups there. Yes. And in here I arrive and I, I have a lot of ideas to create these uh, startups, but still I don't find a way to push them out to the market. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm really uh, excited about having the opportunity to, to meet you. Yeah, uh, I hope you have a chance to be there on the 20th. Yep. And uh, also, I mean, this is a good example of, of initiative. You know, right? Take contact with Innovation Norway. And if you do that, start at the top mm -hmm. on the Itakron process yeah. and then go down. She will she will never help you directly, but she will tell, tell you who, who will. Okay. And uh, so that's good. Uh, this information from that meeting will reach her. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Everything that, that will be said will reach her. She will extract the most important in, let's say, mm -hmm. and, and uh, will be a, what do you call, an innovation speech 
which will be presented the prime minister and, and these other ministers in, in June. So this is a, 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 an important event for us because now we, we will have a chance to hear what our customers are saying. In the other words, we will, we will live as we learn, hopefully. <laughs> Because uh, we're a state organization, and, and state organizations are uh, sometimes very bureaucratic. And uh, we try not to be. The plan is not to be. So, yeah. Okay, well, um, <clears throat> if anyone's interested in the, the um, uh, summer school European thing, please pop over to my one. Uh, I'll just show you that and then we'll go break and you guys can come back and we'll present your ideas to, to your so, um The issue is, you know, if you're doing this stuff internationally and not in innovation your way, then you pay real money for this sort of stuff, right? So um, to some extent, you guys are really lucky that you're in Norway because the government actually pays for an organization to do this rather than you having to personally out of your pocket tax. And that's, you know, just follow up on your, your U.S. experience. Yeah. I mean, there's a big difference between the U.S. and Norway. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and we are maybe the, the most, uh, let's say, the most eglutent ex example, because we are a government body doing exactly what private investors and business angels and what have you in the States are doing, because yeah. they don't have our and any organization that does what we do. Mm -hmm. in, in, under under a let's say a government umbrella, it's it's all private. Yeah. I don't say that that either is better, but but it's different. And if you view this carefully, you'll see down here it says 550 euro is uh, for accommodation. So that's but it's that, three weeks. Mm -hmm. It's three weeks. <laughs> so so that's 1800. Well, that's, that's 1600 euro. Plus 600 euro, so yes, so that's without accommodation. But um, if you do, if you if you join here and put that sort of into an application for for us, that will be very very important mm -hmm. because then you really mean something about what you are heading in. So this is, I mean, but this is serious money, right? Yeah, this is serious this money. Is, this is an investment. Um, and so these guys have this as their, so um, <coughs> you can see they have this pitch um, for what they do. Yeah, 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 it's distinctive on a couple of dimensions. The and first so, yeah. is that it is truly experiential. So the best way to learn entrepreneurship is to get out of the classroom and to jump into an immersive experience and you get immersed quickly mm -hmm. and intensely for Get the hell out of the building. Um, yeah. And I would say secondly, what's also very um, incredible is is the cultural education during the three weeks because you're, you're working with cross-cultural teams uh, from different backgrounds and who bring a diverse set of experiences and that's just pretty much here one you guys. You bring up from the business perspective but more importantly it's just a lot of fun the goals of this program are really fantastic it's to, it's to help energize the cause of entrepreneurship in europe multicultural teams that are uh, creating business ideas and working on those business ideas and actually trying to build a set of customers for those businesses all on a of three weeks. It's really cool. What's great about the EIA is it allows early stage companies and people who are interested in new ideas, it allows them to de-risk those ideas and those companies. Because when you're here, you can work on products, you can work on services, you work on the problems that you have, and ultimately you can figure out what the issues may be before you're out in the public. So you're de-risking um, launching a company without a lot of the eyes that are de-risking stress. What you're really good at and things that you need to work on, you can't read in that book or you can't look at that. It's, it's, it's on the other one. It's it's the the other one. That CEO that's getting paid $30 million to make amazing decisions. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Experiential learning allows you to make those decisions on your own and you start realizing it's not that easy. The startup environment, the entrepreneurship and education gives every student the opportunity to see what every function in a business does. And so I think that we're teaching the right principles here about going out and running experiments and validating your ideas. And so uh, I think that uh, entrepreneurs out there that want to be able to have a hands-on approach and it's not just it's not just two days or it's not just five days and it's not you know a full three months, but it's 
deeply immersive program to teach these principles and hopefully get some wins out of them as you I'll just pause that and go back to that, that diagram. There's your business model canvas. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that, 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 it's right in there. Um, and the challenge that these guys have, of course, is they're working for the all of Europe, which means they're working in countries which don't have an innovation norm and don't have government funding. So you guys luckily actually have a massive opportunity at the moment, having been in Norway, to to do it much easier to do the startup than most of the rest of the world. Yeah. So, yeah. The, only, uh, the, the only downside you have is you have uh, Jan Tullover working <laughs> against you. Yeah. You have a lot of, you know, don't, don't stick your head out. Do stick your head out. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lie. And, and you have a, there's a cultural bias towards not, you know, Going out and doing things. I think yeah, that that's uh, maybe that's a big thing that you have to fight against. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I have experienced that. Uh, I guess they jumped it over. <laughs> and the um, great thing is that this crowd is actually working to promote an uh, experience or, or, or uh, uh, entrepreneurship uh, experience against it. Yeah. Uh, promoting Norway uh, or cultivating this uh, uh, structure of uh, environment without that into consideration. Like, Utterly removed from that. It's but it's it's absolutely I agree totally, uh, and it's also absolutely needed to do something about it. But mm -hmm. this is a sociological process that we're getting in. You know, the Jantelöven is something that is more or less built into Norwegians, yeah. and and it will take generations to get rid of. <laughs> Maybe I don't know, but it it's it is. Uh, Tough cookie to do. Okay, so we'll take a 15 minute break. Yep. Sounds good. And we'll go back in here and present in here. Yeah,